What is a Psalter? A Psalter is a book containing the text of the Book of Psalms from the Old Testament. The most famous Carolingian Psalter is the Utrecht Psalter, known for its lively ink drawings. The manuscript was produced at the Imperial Scriptorium in Reims. In modern-day France, in the first half of the 9th century. The illustrations of the Utrecht Psalter incorporate architectural and landscape scenes. And the text features Roman-style majuscules. As psalms are not narrative, they are challenging to illustrate. The artists who created the Utrecht Psalter illustrated them. By expressively visualizing specific phrases from the text. What is Expressionism? The term Expressionism is commonly used in the arts, but with a capital E. It refers to an art movement that developed in Germany at the start of the 20th century. German Expressionism, like Fauvism, was concerned with communicating powerful feelings. Through color and visual style and expressionist works often incorporate meaningful symbols. There were two important groups of painters who were part of the expressionist movement in Germany. The first was called Die Bruck, the bridge. And the second was known as Der Blaue Reiter, the Blue Riders. What are the main characteristics of Ottonian architecture? The Ottonian rulers emphasized their imperial strength and military prowess. Through the construction of monumental architecture reminiscent of ancient Rome. Churches of the period followed the basilica plan and featured wooden roofs, many of which burned down. The Church of St. Syriacus in Jern Road, Germany, begun in 961. Is one of the best surviving examples of Ottonian architecture. The church architects placed a newfound focus on verticality, which foreshadowed the leaping heights of much later medieval buildings. The church of St. Syriacus features a second floor gallery, clear story windows, and a west workay wall along the west end 74 of the nave, one of the key features of Ottonian church architecture. What is the Colosseum? The Colosseum is an ancient Roman stadium designed to seat 50,000 spectators for events such as gladiator and animal fights. Romans even held mock sea battles here, and were able to flood the arena for such events. Built between 72 and 80 CE. It was the largest Roman amphitheater and was originally known as the Flavian Amphitheater. The original central arena was nearly 30,000 square feet. And the whole structure is more than 600 feet in diameter. The facade of the building was made of three levels of 80 arch arcades. A row of arches, 
plus an attic level, and supported six tiers of seats. Under the seats, barrel vaulted corridors allowed for the passage of athletes and animals. Each of the three arcade levels is decorated according to a different architectural order. Which become more complex as the building rises. The first floor utilizes the simple Tuscan order. While the second and third floor incorporate elements from the Ionic and Corinthian order, respectively. The exterior had been faced with Traverton, but this relatively expensive material has since been looted. What is enamel? Enamel is colored glass that is fired and fused to metal for decoration. One of the earliest forms of enameling known as cloisonne was popular in the Byzantine period and in medieval Europe. Cloisonne involves firing enamel into small metal compartments. Called cloisons, which have been soldiered to a metal plate. Then, the entire piece is fired in a kill to create a jewel-like effect. What is Hinduism? With its roots in the culture of the Indus Valley, Hinduism is not a monolithic religion. But a name that encompasses diverse groups who worship many different gods and goddesses with multifaceted attributes. One major unifying element of Hinduism is adherence to the Vedas. Ancient works of literature that serve as the foundation of the Hindu religion. Who were the great masters? The term great master can be thrown around quite loosely to indicate a highly esteemed artist. And is used to describe certain Renaissance and 16th century artists. Artists such as Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Titian, among many others, are referred to both as great masters and occasionally as old masters. To differentiate them from notable artists from more historically recent times. Towards the end of the Renaissance, master artists were increasingly seen as celebrities rather than mere manual laborers. The term itself comes from the master-apprentice system that was used to train artists during the Renaissance. In this system, rather than be sent to an art school, there were none at this time. Students as young as five years old would be sent to work and train as a workshop apprentice under the guidance of a master artist. The master usually promised to feed and house the apprentice in exchange for assistance cleaning and preparing materials, and eventually working on the master's art commissions. Many works by famous artists were the product of a workshop staffed by many artists, including young apprentices. What is Rococo?
Rococo is a distinctive style of art, architecture, literature, music and more, popular during the 18th century in Europe. The name comes from French, and is a blend of the word stones and shells. Both popular items in 18th century gardens. Like many other terms such as Gothic and Baroque, the term was created much later and used to disparagingly describe what 19th century critics considered the gaudy, bad taste of the 18th century. Rococo architecture is highly ornate, and characterized by curving. Rather than rigid forms, pastel colors, and an element of fantasy or whimsy. Painting also features pastel colors and witty, frivolous scenes of aristocratic lovers and mythological figures. Though there are occasionally cynical undertones in some Rococo paintings. For example in the prints and paintings of William Hogarth. Rococo first developed as a cohesive style in Paris and is specifically associated with the French King Louis XV and the rise of the bourgeois, or upper middle class. As with other categories of art, regional differences lead to variation of Rococo style. Important Rococo painters include Jean Antoine Watteau. Jean Honor Fragonard, and Johann Balthasar Newman, among others. What is a thanka? The thanka is a painted banner, and an important form of Tibetan art. Thankas often depict important people such as spiritual and political leaders in a way similar to Byzantine icons. Which suggests that those individuals depicted in Thankas have reached a semi-divine status. The Thanka of Green Terra is nearly two feet long and depicts the protective Tibetan deity, Green Terra. Who personifies transcendent wisdom and is often thought of as the universal mother figure to Buddhas. Made with ink and color on canvas, this 13th century Thanka shows the deity surrounded by architectural forms and 17 species of the Bodhi tree. This particular Thanka is part of the Indian and Southeast Asian Art Collection at the Cleveland Art Museum. What is the creation of Adam? The creation of Adam is the most famous of Michelangelo's frescoes on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Adam is seen nude, reclining on a patch of bare terrain while God the Father approaches from the air, accompanied by angels and cherubs. God is shown with long, gray hair and a flowing beard, which are blown back by the wind. A red cape swirls around the figures and God's hand reaches out. Toward Adam with one finger outstretched, delivering the spark of life. Adam seems to move slightly towards God. Though his wrist is limp and his head lolls to one side he is not yet fully alive. Their fingers appear mere centimeters apart, eliciting tension and drama. This is one of the most iconic images in all of art history. Michelangelo has captured the seconds immediately before God awakens Adam to life. 
The creation of Adam is both delicate and powerful, poised and energized. What is Impressionism? Impressionism is an artistic style that developed first in France in the latter half of the 19th century and is known for a somewhat unfinished quality, as well as a focus on leisure and cafe scenes, landscapes, cityscapes, and genre scenes. Like the realists, the Impressionists were interested in capturing visual reality. But they were particularly interested in the properties of light, both natural and artificial. Artists such as Claude Monet studied changes in the colors of the atmosphere as the sun moved through the sky. Recent rainfall intrigued artists like Gustav Calabot and Camille Pissarro, who both painted natural light and light from gas lamps that reflected off the rain soaked streets of Paris. Most Impressionists came from middle or upper class French families. But because their work was initially unpopular, they often lived in poor neighborhoods in Paris. Frequently gathering at the Café Guerbois in the Montmartre district. The popularity of leisure and café scenes is a tribute to the lifestyle of the Impressionists. The Impressionists had a difficult time being accepted by both art critics and the art viewing public. And were regularly rejected from exhibitions at the Palais de Beaux Arts, Palace of Fine Arts. Instead, they held their own shows between 1874 and 1886. And ended up having an enormous influence on modern art. Today, Impressionism continues to be one of the most popular styles of painting and sculpture. And Impressionist shows attract thousands of visitors to museums and galleries around the world. What is Yomon Pottery? The Japanese Yomon culture, c. 10,000 to 300 BCE, was a settled hunter-gatherer society with a long-standing tradition of clay pottery. Yomon pottery from the middle and later periods are very creative and the clay was pulled and twisted into unique forms. Animalistic pieces called dagu are likely effigies of the people who owned them, and are highly abstracted. Some have large, heart-shaped faces, long twisting arms, and even markings similar to tattoos. What is Angkor Wat? Angkor Wat is an enormous Hindu temple complex in Cambodia featuring a series of walled courtyards leading to a group of central towers. Built over 30 years by the Khmer King Sur Yavar Mantu during the first half of the 12th century. Angkor Wat's five lotus shaped towers each symbolize peaks of Mount Meru. A mountain considered sacred in Hindu, Jain, and Buddhist traditions. The central tower is approximately 200 feet tall and the entire complex is aligned with the sun. So that on the summer solstice, 
the sun rises up directly over the central tower when viewed from the western gate. Suryavarman II's goal was to associate himself with the god Vishnu and the entire temple. Complex is covered in miles of relief carvings depicting the king and the many avatars of Vishnu. What is line? Imagine holding an ink pen and pressing the pen against a piece of paper to make a black dot. Continue to hold the pen and then slowly drag the pen across the page. The original black point has now been extended horizontally to form a line. Line is one of the core elements of art. Line is used to outline shapes and to create forms. The characteristics of a line convey feeling and emotion. A shaky line is vulnerable while a bold, straight line is powerful. The term linear, is used to describe art that emphasizes line as opposed to light, color, or form. A linear sculpture is one that emphasizes its outline, or exterior contours. Who was Bronzino? Bronzino was the nickname of Florentine artist Agnolo di Cosimo. 1503-1572, who studied under Pontormo, a fellow Mannerist painter. Bronzino's most significant patron was the Medici family. For whom he completed many projects, including altarpieces and frescoes. Today, his portraits are among his most well known paintings, particularly his portrait of a young man. Painted in the 1530s, and now in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. The identity of the young portrait sitter is unknown. But he is likely a friend of Bronzino's who ran in the same literary circles. Bronzino also wrote poetry. The sitter holds his finger gingerly between the pages of a book, eliciting curiosity about its contents. The well dressed young man is poised with good posture and an air of confidence that is only belied by his slightly crossed eyes. He seems to be fully aware of his own superficial airs. He is as much of a mask as the faces carved into the side of the ornate table. This is Bronzino's skill the artist has an ability to purposefully pose his sitter for the viewer. To make us aware that we can only see the cover, and not the contents of the book. Who is Mariko Mori? Mariko Mori, 1967, is a contemporary Japanese artist whose work includes videos, photographs, and installations, such as Tom N. A. Hu, 2006, a high tech, monolithic structure whose light changes and blinks as it reacts to information recorded by the Super Cameo Konda Neutrino Observatory in Tokyo. Mori's work is often influenced by technology and Buddhism. Where can I see art in my area?
Art is all around us, especially if you are looking for it. Be sure to check out local galleries and museums. Which usually have both permanent collections and temporary exhibitions that change regularly. Cafes, bookstores, and frame shops also often hang original art. By local artists on the walls and sometimes have talks about art. These are great places to meet other people who are interested in art. Especially during the summer months. Arts and crafts fairs and festivals are frequently held in downtowns, parks, and fairgrounds. Search online or stop in at your local arts and crafts store, gallery, or cafe. Which might have some information on upcoming art events. I want to learn more. What is graphic art? Graphic art is a loose term encompassing two-dimensional art such as drawing, painting, and printmaking, especially work that emphasizes line over color. Graphic art, a broad category, is not the same thing as graphic design, which relates to printed work that incorporates text and image. What is art theory? Theories of art or critical theories. Help us understand the meaning of art and culture from a philosophical perspective. Many artists use art to communicate philosophic opinions and ideas about art and culture through their work. While scholars and art historians use theory to put art and artists into cultural context. Theorists are interested in looking beyond the superficial qualities of art and digging deep into questions of meaning and significance. Some, but definitely not all, important lines of theoretical questioning come from fields such as psychoanalysis, Marxism, feminism, and gender studies, post colonialism, and postmodernism. What is constructivism? Constructivism made a major impact on other 20th century movements such as Bauhaus and Astigl. Like Supermatism, constructivism was highly influenced by both Cubism and Futurism and emphasized abstraction and the purity of geometric forms. The movement was founded by Russian painter and architect. Vladimir Tatlin, 1885-1953, who created sculptural constructions. Interestingly, Tatlin did not consider himself a constructivist but rather a productivist. Though his work is considered to be at the heart of the movement. Tatlin made his sculptural assemblages out of industrial materials such as wood, plaster, glass, and metal. He also believed that art served an important social purpose, and the constructivist movement is tied to the radical political changes that occurred in Russia during the October Revolution in 1917. Constructivist Artists believed that art could play an important role in the creation of a new, 
Utopian Society One of the key elements of constructivism, is the idea that a work of art, whether a painting or a sculpture, is created by assembling so-called autonomous elements. For example, a sculpture is made up of individual elements such as a line and a plane. This new concept conceived of sculpture as an additive, rather than reductive process. Materials are compiled, rather than carved away. And this had a major impact on painting, architecture, and design in the 20th century. What is avant-garde art? As with many art terms, the word avant-garde comes from French and roughly translates to vanguard. Avant-garde art is art that is on the front lines. And the term can be used to describe any innovative or new modern art. The experimentations of avant-garde artists, writers, and thinkers often cause shock, and even anger, among critics and general audiences. The mid-19th century paintings of Edouard Manet, especially Olympia and Dejeuner sur Elherb, shocked audiences for their confrontational nudity and manipulation of traditional subject matter. Throughout the late 19th and 20th centuries, waves of avant-garde movements have continued to ruffle feathers and push boundaries. From Monet's impressionist experimentations, to Cubism, to Duchamp's Fountain, 1917. What are Rajput paintings? Rajasthan, in northern India, was not part of the Mughal Empire's vast territory. Instead, it was controlled by Hindu Rajput rulers. Painting traditions in Rajasthan were influenced by Persian and Mughal miniature painting traditions and Popular subject matter included images of Hindu gods, such as Krishna, and were often romantic and erotic. In Krishna and Radha in a pavilion, see 1760, the Hindu god Krishna commonly represented with blue skin, is caressing his lover. Radha, while a yellow bolt of lightning overhead symbolizes their sexual attraction. What was Dura Europo? Dura Europo was an ancient trading town established in the 3rd century B. CE and abandoned by 256 CE in modern day Syria. After being long forgotten, the settlement was rediscovered by British soldiers in the early 20th century. The site features Greco Roman temples dedicated to Greek gods such as Zeus and Artemis as well as temples decorated with images of ancient Near Eastern deities such as the Persian god Mitras, and a variation on the Sumerian moon goddess, Nana. Also found here was one of the earliest known Jewish synagogues and a Christian house church. 
both early Christians and early Jews built their churches and synagogues in private houses. The Dura Europo synagogue was large and richly decorated with interior wall paintings. Emphasizing green and yellow color schemes, and featured a niche for Torah scrolls. The house church was built in 246 CE and contained one of the earliest known baptismal fonts. The walls were decorated with images from both the Old and New Testament. Including an image of Christ walking on water. The Dura Europo site preserves evidence of a rich melting pot of ancient cultures and gives. Scholars' insights into the visual culture of early Jews and Christians of the ancient world. What are some of the most important Christian symbols in art? Dove a symbol of purity and peace. The dove can also symbolize the Holy Spirit of the Christian Trinity. Lamb, the lamb represents sacrifice. Jesus Christ is referred to as the Lamb of God as he was sacrificed on behalf of humanity. A flock of sheep, by contrast, represents Christian worshippers who are protected by Christ. The Good Shepherd Cross, this is the most prominent symbol of Christianity and it symbolizes the wooden beams used to crucify Jesus Christ. It is both a symbol of Christ's suffering, as well as Christ's triumph and resurrection. For Evangelists the four evangelists are also referred to as the four Gospels as they wrote the Gospels in the New Testament of the Bible. Each of them is often represented with a particular symbol or attribute. Saint Matthew is shown as a man or angel, Saint Mark is a lion. Saint Luke is an ox, Saint John is an eagle. What is pre-Columbian art? Pre-Columbian art is a broad term given to the art of Mesoamerica, which includes Mexico and Central America, and South America before the arrival of Christopher Columbus. In 1492, it includes the art of large cultures such as the Maya, Aztecs, and Inca. Where can I see art in my area? Art is all around us, especially if you are looking for it. Be sure to check out local galleries and museums, which usually have both permanent collections and temporary exhibitions that change regularly. Cafes, bookstores, and frame shops also often hang original art by local artists on the walls and sometimes have talks about art. These are great places to meet other people who are interested in art. Especially during the summer months. Arts and crafts fairs and festivals are frequently held in downtowns, parks, and fairgrounds. Search online or stop in at your local arts and crafts store, gallery, or cafe which might have some information on upcoming art events. I want to learn more.
What is process art? Process art is art that explores the act of producing art and is often less concerned with the object or work that is eventually produced. The process art movement began in the 1960s and can be seen in the paintings of abstract expressionist Jackson Pollock, which were at least in part defined by the process through which he made them the drip and splatter process. Other art movements also have overlaps with process art, including earthworks, land art. Because of the way in which the environment acts upon them after they are created. The often monumental yet minimalist work of American sculptor Richard Serra. 1939, is a good example of process art. His steel sculptures encourage viewers to think about the nature of the materials and the way in which they were put together. What at first seems simple a tall, tower-like slab of steel, for example, becomes a curiosity as one contemplates how What is Las Meninas? Las Meninas, 1656, is huge, both in its physical size and its significance in the history of art. While at first glance the painting appears to be a simple depiction of the young princess, Infanta Margarita Teresa, posing for her portrait, further inspection reveals a much more complicated scene. The Petit Princess, wearing a white dress and a ribbon in her blonde hair, is at the relative center of the image and is surrounded by her doting attendants and a well-behaved dog. Behind the attendants, a chaperone and perhaps a bodyguard, watch over the room. In the far right background, an open door lets light into the space as the Queen's Chamberlain steps in. To the left of the group stands the artist himself, Diego Velázquez. He is poised and confident with his shoulders back, holding his palette for the viewer to clearly see. In front of him is an enormous canvas upon which he is. Presumably painting the image that we are now seeing. Curiously, just behind the infanta's head, is a mirror hung on the back wall. Within this mirror, we can see a reflection of the king and queen. What kind of art was made in Isle Fett? Ali Fe was the capital of the Yoruba people of Nigeria from the 13th to the 15th century. An era known as the pavement period due to the Yoruba practice of paving parts of the city with rectangular rows of stone and pottery fragments laid out in a herring bone pattern. Ali Fe was an important center for the arts, and the Yoruba established a long tradition of portraiture including works in stone, wood, and terracotta, as well as later works in bronze, brass, and other metal alloys made using the lost wax casting method. Portrait sculpture played an important role in ritualistic ancestor worship, and sculptures were often ornately decorated with veils, wigs, crowns, or neck rings, 
particularly during important ceremonies. What is the mask of Agamemnon? The mask of Agamemnon is a gold funerary mask discovered in a Mycenaean citadel by archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann. The mask was meant to lay over the face of a deceased man, and the almond-like eyes appear to be closed. While many details of the face are abstracted, such as the curvilinear ears and round chin, some details may be individualized. Schliemann believed the citadel where he was excavating was the home of the legendary Trojan war hero. Agamemnon, and he gave the piece its name. It has been at the center of controversy ever since. With some claiming that Schliemann committed a forgery and hammered some of the gold himself. At the very least, modern scholars no longer believe this piece belonged specifically to Agamemnon. But are still impressed by the power and craftsmanship of the mask. Who was Frank Lloyd Wright? Frank Lloyd Wright, 1867 to 1959, was a famous American architect whose decorative aesthetic continues to be immensely popular and well respected today. Wright's career began in Chicago, Illinois, where he worked first for Joseph Lyman Silsby and later Adler and Sullivan. Louis Sullivan was one of Wright's greatest inspirations. Wright is most closely associated with domestic architecture, known as his prairie school houses. Wright's designs for houses, such as Roby House, 1907-1909, in Chicago, are characterized by long horizontal forms. Open floor plans, overhanging eaves, use of natural materials and integration with the flat landscapes of the Midwest. Like other architects working in the early 20th century. Wright was interested in developing a unified architecture, but, he also believed in what he called organic architecture. For Wright, this meant that he was concerned with designing a structure. As well as designing its interior, furniture, and landscape to create an integrated whole. Some of Wright's most famous projects include Falling Water, built into the rocky landscape of Mill Run, Pennsylvania, in 1935, and the curving Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum in New York, which opened just after Wright's death in 1959. Why are the Cubist paintings of Brock and Picasso so similar? Even for scholars, it is sometimes nearly impossible to tell the work of Picasso and Brock apart. And it is possible that Cubism would not have developed at all without the competitive exchange of ideas that occurred during the dueling careers of these two artists. Both explored still lives, were intrigued by the physical properties of musical instruments, and often painted with similar color palettes. As Brock himself explained, we were like two mountain climbers roped together, 
quoted in Stockstad 1079. What was the purpose of Stonehenge? Like all other Neolithic art, lack of written records and other archaeological evidence makes it extremely difficult. If not impossible, to know exactly what sites like Stonehenge were used for. The theories about Stonehenge are wide-ranging, and some are more plausible than others. Much has been made of Stonehenge's possible religious significance. Including the idea that it may have been used for human and animal sacrifices. And though cremated human remains have been found, this suggestion has fallen out of favor. A complete skeleton was unearthed at Stonehenge. It was the body of a man who had been shot through the chest with arrows. While this discovery does indicate violence, it does not necessarily suggest religious sacrifice. Some scholars, particularly a core group of astronomers, believe the purpose of Stonehenge is technological. They think the site served as a Neolithic observatory and was used to track the movements of the sun. An important function in a society reliant upon agriculture to survive. While Stonehenge is aligned to the summer solstice, this theory is also hotly debated. Why did Whistler go to court? James Abbott McNeil Whistler, 1834-1903, is now most famous for a portrait of his mother in a rocking chair. But his work during the second half of the 19th century is notable for its increasing abstraction. Whistler was American, but spent the majority of his career in London. And never returned to the United States after moving to that English city. His early paintings were influenced by aestheticism and he painted many successful portraits. But he was interested in the idea of art as a visual music. He even named an 1862 portrait of a girl in a white dress, Symphony in White No. 1. To emphasize the musicality of his work. In his 1893 autobiography, The Gentle Art of Making Enemies, he wrote, As music is the poetry of sound, so is painting the poetry of sight and the subject matter. Has nothing to do with harmony of sound or of color, as quoted in Stockstad 885. In 1875, Whistler shocked the world with his almost completely abstract painting. Nocturne in Black and Gold, also known as the Falling Rocket. Whistler was accused of having no clear subject for his work. And those who viewed it described it as looking unfinished. The painting personally enraged John Ruskin, Britain's premier art critic who accused the artist of throwing paint in the public's face with such an abstract work. Whistler sued Ruskin for libel and soon Whistler found himself on the witness stand answering questions about his artistic intentions. When asked about the subject of the painting, Whistler explained that he was attempting an artistic arrangement and a representation of fireworks over the town of Cremern. 
not a realistic visualization of the town. He further explained his support for the aesthetic concept of art for art's sake. Whistler won the trial, but received only a single farthing in damages. A reflection of the generally negative attitude about his work at the time. The episode also highlights the vigor with which artists and critics were debating the value of increased abstraction. What is the difference between a column and a pier? A column is a cylindrical vertical support that usually tapers towards the top in the manner of a tree trunk. Columns can be freestanding or engaged, which means they are attached to a wall. Engaged columns do not provide structural support. Conventional columns that follow the traditional Greek classical orders feature a base shaft, and capital, also see Art of the Ancient World, C 5000 BCE to 400 C. E. A pier is generally much larger than a column and is usually made of stone, brick, or concrete. Piers act as vertical supports for masonry constructions such as arcades. Why was Charlemagne interested in illustrated manuscripts? The medieval ruler Charlemagne was crowned Holy Roman Emperor in the year 800 and controlled a territory that included Germany, France, the Netherlands, and parts of Italy. As Holy Roman Emperor, Charlemagne's goal was to unify his secular government with the Christian Church and to restore the Western Roman Empire, albeit as a Christian kingdom. Charlemagne clearly saw the power of arts and education as a fundamental part of his campaign. And he turned to monasteries the intellectual centers of the medieval world to support his mission of conquering all of Europe. Charlemagne's court in Aachen, Germany, became a leading center for artists including architects, sculptors, and illuminators. Charlemagne's scriptoria in Aachen produced some of the most important illuminated manuscripts of the of late 8th and 9th centuries in Europe, which resulted in the spread of Christianity. The standardization of church practices, and the solidification of the emperor's power across Europe. What is body art? In body art, the artist's body becomes the medium. Body art overlaps with many other forms and styles, such as performance art. It became popular during the 1960s, likely as a reaction against the cold austerity of minimalism. Examples of body art include Bruce Naumann's photograph, self-portrait as a fountain, 1966-1967, in which the artist's body takes on the characteristics of a fountain as water squirts from his mouth. An example of conceptual body art is Piero Manzoni's living sculpture. 1961, in which the artist signed the bodies of living women.
Who was Mondrian? Piet Mondrian, 1872-1944, was a Dutch painter who made significant contributions to 20th century abstraction, especially geometric abstraction. He was an important part of the distigital movement and he is most well known for paintings that depict flat geometric grids in neutral and primary colors. During his early career, Mondrian's art was not totally abstract. Paintings such as Still Life with Ginger Pot, 1911, and Grey Tree, 1912, show the artist's early flirtation with Cubism and even earlier works such as Mill at Evening. 1905, are linked to the Dutch landscape tradition. Mondrian's style changed throughout his career. He was influenced by Cubism, but believed that the goal of painting should be complete abstraction as a vehicle for communicating reality. He supported the idea that color and form could impose pure reality on the viewer in what he called plastic expression. According to Mondrian, a work of art needed to balance movement, form, and color in order to achieve this reality, an aesthetic philosophy called neoplasticism. Mondrian's paintings, such as composition with large red plane, yellow, black, gray and blue, 1921, are meticulously painted to achieve the utmost informal balance and produce dynamic energy, a sense of depth, and a balance between simplicity and complexity. What was the Great Bath at Mohenjo-Daro? Mohenjo-Daro was an Indus Valley city constructed on a grid plan and made of sun-baked brick. Featuring extensive drainage and plumbing systems. There are records of private bathing areas, toilets, and hundreds of wells in the city some of the earliest known in the ancient world. The Great Bath was a large, watertight pool built near a citadel and was 39 feet long. 23 feet wide, and 8 feet deep. The Great Baths likely served not only a recreational purpose, but also might have been a place for religious rituals. What was the iconoclastic controversy? During the early history of the Christian Church, there was a debate about whether or not it was appropriate to make representational images in religious art. The term iconoclasm means image breaking and iconoclasts believed that representational imagery should be forbidden. At the heart of the debate was the relationship between a painted image and the figure being depicted. There was fear of idolatry and a fear that beauty could distract the viewer from the religious sanctity of the figure. It is possible the rise of Islam, and the iconoclastic views of that religion, influenced the Byzantines during the iconoclastic controversy.
What was the Gothic Revival? Also known as the Neo-Gothic Movement, the Gothic Revival was an 18th hand. 19th century architectural movement characterized by the revival of medieval style and coincided with the increased popularity of medieval literature and poetry. A good example of Gothic Revival architecture is Strawberry Hill. The private home of Horace Walpole, 1717-1797, in Twickenham, England. Walpole's home design included round turrets topped with crenellated battlements. Tooth-like notches used for defense in medieval buildings. And pointed arch tracery windows similar to those found in French Gothic cathedrals. Another example of Gothic Revival architecture is the Palace of Westminster in London. Which was rebuilt after a fire in 1834. Gothic Revival architecture was a popular style. For universities both in Europe and the United States, including the University of Glasgow. The University of Chicago, and the City College of New York among many others. What is the Corinthian Order? The Corinthian Order was the last of the three classical Greek orders of architecture to develop. The tallest and most elaborate of the three orders, a Corinthian column is built at a ratio of approximately 13,1. Which means the height of the column is 13 times taller than the width. Originally designed for interior use. The Corinthian order features a capital decorated with flowers and leaves of the acanthus plant while the Doric and Ionic order feature a cornice entablature, the Corinthian entablature is flat. According to the Roman architect and writer Vitruvius, and later repeated by the Renaissance writer Vasari, the artist and poet Callimachus was inspired to design the Corinthian capital after seeing a basket of overgrown acanthus leaves placed in front of a young girl's grave in the Greek city-state of Corneth. The Temple of Olympian Zeus is a Hellenistic temple that was started using the Doric order, but finished years later using the Corinthian order. The temple's massive columns are over 55 feet high. Classically inspired modern buildings continue to incorporate the Corinthian design. Including the General Post Office in New York and the U.S. Capitol Building. Why did Jasper Johns paint the American flag? Jasper Johns, 1930, is an American contemporary artist known for his painting, printing, and sculpture. His paintings frequently feature familiar objects and symbols such as targets, numbers, and the American flag. In line with the themes and goals of pop art, Johns was interested in using familiar objects in a new way. Rather than create new images, he wanted to depict things the mind already knows. As quoted in the Met Museum timeline of art history. He said that his decision to paint flags was inspired by a dream. 
and his realistic works serve to highlight the artificiality of the symbols he represents. Why is Egyptian portrait sculpture so stiff? Egyptian portrait sculpture, especially sculptures of the pharaohs, were designed to last for eternity and were made according to strict guidelines. Pharaohs needed to be clearly identifiable by their elaborate headdresses and false beards. Pharaonic sculptures show the ruler either standing erect or sitting enthroned with hands resting on the knees, one first clenched and one lying flat. These dignified sculptures command respect, and are also very durable. Carved from the same piece of grey sandstone, the double portrait of Menkor and a queen. From Giza, depicts the pharaoh with his wife. Each figure stands with a rigid, upright posture. Menkaur's body is youthful and strong, his hands are at his sides, fists clenched. And his left leg takes a stern step forward. The queen's arms, however, wrap delicately around the pharaoh's waist, joining the couple in a supportive embrace. This piece follows strict Egyptian conventions of portraiture, clearly indicating the ruler's power and the queen's status at his side. Who is Titian? Titian is the nickname of Tiziano Vecalio, who started his career as Georgian's assistant and went on to become the official painter to the Republic of Venice. Titian essentially picked up where Georgian left off after his early death and worked on a number of paintings attributed by some to Georgian. Titian was a highly regarded painter during his long life and was even praised by Charles V. The Holy Roman Emperor, who wanted only Titian to paint his portrait. Titian worked in oil, and was known to finely grind his pigments. And apply many layers of glaze to the surface of his canvas. As a result, Titian's paintings are nearly unparalleled in their vibrancy and color. What is OP art? The op in op art refers to optical illusion and op art paintings such as Bridget Riley's Metamorphosis, 1964, are composed of precise, geometric abstractions. Op art paintings pulse with an energy created by a strategic alignment of color and form, creating a blurring after image. Similar to the experience of looking at a bright light for too long, or looking into a funhouse mirror. Hungarian artist Viktor Vazerelai, 1908-1997, was a pioneer of op art. His commercial paintings of zebras, and their repetitious black and white stripes, served as early optic experimentations while works such as the black and white supernovae, 1959-1961, are dynamic and restless. Vazerali linked these works to free-moving kinetic art by artists such as Alexander Calder. 
the viewer is an essential part of the op art experience because without the viewer specifically the viewer's perception, there can be no optical illusion. Op art serves as an inquiry into the very nature of optical perception the experience of seeing things. How did African art influence art of the early 20th century? At the beginning of the early 20th century, Western artists such as Pablo Picasso 1881-1973, and Emile Nolde, 1867-1956, became interested in the so-called primitive art of non-Western cultures, including the arts of Africa and the Pacific. In France, artists were able to see non-Western art at the Musée d'Ethnographie in Paris. Although they were inspired by the visual expressivity and relative abstraction of much non-Western art, most European artists made little to no attempt to understand the historical and cultural context of the pieces they viewed, and often purchased. Picasso's art was significantly inspired by African style. Allowing the artist freedom to explore with color and style. For example, one his most important paintings, Des Moiselles de Vignon, 1907, is characterized by elongated figures and abstract faces commonly found in African masks and sculpture. Another painting, Mother and Child, 1907, uses bold colors and ovoid forms to reinvent traditional Christian subject matter. Despite the clear influence, Picasso occasionally downplayed the importance of African art his own work, preferring not to talk about it. What is post-painterly abstraction? The term post-painterly abstraction was coined by influential American art critic Clement Greenberg. 1909-1994, to describe abstract art inspired by but separate from American abstract expressionism. His term encapsulated multiple categories 242 of abstraction. Including, but not limited to, Hard edge painting and stain painting. Hard edge painting, as exemplified by the work of artists Frank Stella, 1936, and Ellsworth Kelly, 1923, is characterized by large geometric areas of color with absolutely no blending. Colors transition abruptly from one to the next, such as in Stella's Grand Cairo. 1962, a painting composed of a colorful series of ever smaller square outlines. The artist Helen Frankenthaler is known for championing the technique of staining the canvas with pure color. Also considered to be a form of post-painterly abstraction. Post-painterly abstraction emphasizes the formal qualities of painting, such as shape and color. Artists experimented with shaped canvas, transforming the painting into an object, or sculpture. Post-painterly abstraction lasted until the 1970s when postmodern artists began to challenge the supremacy of modernist critic Clement Greenberg.
What is post painterly abstraction? The term post painterly abstraction was coined by influential American art critic Clement Greenberg. 1909 to 1994 to describe abstract art inspired by but separate from American abstract expressionism. His term encapsulated multiple categories 242 of abstraction, including, but not limited to, hard edge painting and stain painting. Hard edge painting, as exemplified by the work of artists Frank Stella, 1936, and Ellsworth Kelly. 1923, is characterized by large geometric areas of color with absolutely no blending. Colors transition abruptly from one to the next, such as in Stella's Grand Cairo. 1962, a painting composed of a colorful series of ever smaller square outlines. The artist Helen Frankenthaler is known for championing the technique of staining the canvas with pure color. Also considered to be a form of post-painterly abstraction. Post-painterly abstraction emphasizes the formal qualities of painting, such as shape and color. Artists experimented with shaped canvas, transforming the painting into an object, or sculpture. Post-painterly abstraction lasted until the 1970s when postmodern artists began to challenge the supremacy of modernist critic Clement Greenberg. What is the difference between Romanticism and Realism? Although seemingly at odds, 19th century realism overlapped quite a bit with the Romantic movement of the same period. While the Romantics reacted against the Enlightenment and were often idealistic in their representation of historical and current events, the 19th century realists were interested in accurately depicting the human condition, with an element of social awareness. Both realists and romantics value direct observation of nature. Though realists further emphasized social observation and, occasionally, political and social satire. How did art change in the 19th century? During the 19th century, the world experienced massive social upheavals due to the Industrial Revolution. The German philosophers Friedrich Engels, 1821-895, and Karl Marx, 1818-1883, authors of the Communist Manifesto. 1848, believed that the working class, the proletariat, would soon revolt against the bourgeois. Marx in particular was interested in the artist as a member of the proletariat, whose work art was consumed and exploited by the upper classes. Because of the new availability of manufactured goods, handmade items and traditional crafts took on new value. Other important thinkers also affected 19th century perceptions of art, such as Sigmund Freud, 1856 to 1923, an Austrian neurologist who is credited with founding psychoanalysis. 
which inspired many artists and writers. The 19th century also saw the rise of the newspaper, and along with it, the rise in the importance of the art critic, whose voice became ever more important in judging and valuing art. Unlike in previous centuries, museums and galleries became important public and business institutions. A change from the previous system of royal or church patronage that characterized art production during the Renaissance. Towards the middle of the 19th century, Romanticism faded and realism became more popular in European art. By the end of the century, the public was shocked by Impressionism and Post-Impressionism, which evolved from realism and, in some cases, a new interest in psychology. Why is the tiny Tempietto an important example of high Renaissance architecture? The Tempietto is a small, circular church, officially called the Church of San Pietro in Montorio, Rome. It was designed around 1502 by Donato Bramante. A famed architect from Urbino who was later hired to design St. Peter's Cathedral. Tempieto means Little Temple and its style is reminiscent of an ancient pagan temple. It was built over what is believed to be the site of St. Peter's crucifixion and housed relics associated with the Apostle. Bramante's design was very much in tune with classical aesthetics popular during the Renaissance, especially in Italy. The architectural elements are mathematically proportioned and the overall style is unified, making the building almost like a work of sculpture. The simplicity of the exterior, along with the use of classical columns, a dome, and hemispherical entablature, inspired many other building projects in Rome. Though small, the Tempieto is one of the most significant examples of high Renaissance architecture in Italy. <laughs> 